Hello and welcome to our video on getting started with Christopher Newport University's AV equipment. Christopher Newport University has a standard AV setup in most of our classrooms and this video will give you a quick tour of how it all works. Alright, let's get started. Let's take a quick tour of the classroom. First off, you see the projectors are off and when we pan around you'll notice the screens are up in the ceiling. Let's now Go and take a closer look at the lectern itself. So now we're at the lectern. You see there's the touch panel here on the left. You've got a monitor. Um, all of our monitors have some sort of touchscreen ability. Some are smart monitors, some are just regular touchscreens. And a dot cam. And the rest of this is all located in this locked cabinet here. So let's take a look at what is in the lectern. Here on the top you see the power distribution. Don't mess with that because it'll mess everything up if you turn it off. Going down we've got the listen device. That is for students who are deaf or hard of hearing to be able to hear your computer audio. Keep going down and we have the PC. You can put a DVD in there. You can also, if the computer doesn't appear to be working, make sure this blue light is on. You also have four USB ports on the computer. There's some on the monitor too, so if you don't want to risk accidentally closing the door and breaking your thumb drive, then just uh, use the ones on the monitor instead. Keep going down here, we have a Blu-ray player. Um, a few rooms in Forbes may still have a VHS player, but other than that, every other room has a Blu-ray player. You will see controls on this player, but you don't need to use those controls because they're built into the touch panels you'll see in a second. If we keep going down, the rest of this equipment in the cabinet is to power everything in the classroom. So you don't want to touch that because everything that you're going to deal with is controlled directly from the touch panel. Speaking of the touch panel, let's take a look at it. So when you first come into the classroom, the touch panel will probably be blank. If not, you'll see this logo. So touch it once to wake it up, and when you see this logo, touch it again. Now if you're in an older classroom, then it may actually have a slightly different logo, but it works the same way either way. To use the classroom PC, just hit PC. Once you do that, you'll notice that the projectors come on and the screens come down and you're able to immediately start using it. So you log into the classroom computer just like you log into any other computer on campus. Uh, if you see someone else's account here on the front, that doesn't mean that they're still logged in or anything like that. Just click other user here Enter your CNU ID number and your CNU password. Once you're there, you can use any of the apps that you need to. Now, when you're all done, it's very important that you log out of the computer. You don't want to just leave it alone and let it lock because you'll tie up resources that the instructor after you needs. And you don't want to turn it off because then we're not able to maintain it. So click the start menu, click this person icon right here, and choose sign out. That's all there is to it. Now if you brought your own laptop, you're not left out either. We have both VGA connectors and HDMI connectors. If you've got a laptop that uses some other connector, you'll be responsible for bringing your own dongles. All you have to do is press the appropriate connector and your laptop will be displayed instead. If you've brought a Blu-ray, just hit the Blu-ray button. And not only will the Blu-ray player be working, but you'll have the full remote control right here on the panel. You can even control the volume with the volume buttons here on the panel and mute it with the mute button. Close out of that. The last item is the document camera. To turn it on, you hit the dot cam button, and then we'll go over to the dot cam to show you how it works. So most of our classrooms have these Wolf Vision dot cams, and there's a few steps for using them properly. To raise the dot cam, grip this ring, pull up. It's a little easier with two hands, but I'm holding the camera with the other one. So now the head's up there and we can turn it on with the power button here. 
you have to press it with authority sometimes, and you will see that it starts to work. Put something on here, and if we pan up to our screen, you see that it's displayed. So there's a few controls you can do on the dot cam. They're here on the head. You can zoom in with the wheel. And notice you get closer and further away. This prevents you from having to push the head down or anything like that because that would break it. Another nice feature is this freeze button right here. When I push that, then I can take the item off the document camera, pass it around or whatever, and it's still displayed on the screen. Now one important note, this nice white surface here may look like a whiteboard, but it is not one. So please don't bring any markers in and write on that. And to protect the document camera, please also put a notebook or something under a piece of paper if you're going to write on it. When you're done using the dot camera, you can turn it off by pushing the button here. And again, grab the ring and gently lower the head down. Again, if you have two hands, it's easier to put one to support the head. Don't push on it, just support it as you bring it down. All right, let's go back to our touch panel. So there are two more sets of functions I want to show you on the touch panel. The first is advanced routing. Now this only applies if you're teaching in a multi-projector classroom. So what I can do is I can route different things to different projectors. So I can route the PC maybe to one projector and the Blu-ray to the project other projector and the speakers. Maybe I'm doing something where people are live tweeting a particular movie or something. When I do that, notice I have the PC on one projector and if I turn around here I've got the Blu-ray player, which doesn't have a Blu-ray in it, so it's just sitting there like that on the other one. One last bit of information you'll want to know is the system tools. So if I hit that, you'll see there's power, which controls the projector, whether it's on or off, picture mute, which I'll cover in just a second, and screen, which lowers or raises the screen. Now the screen is either all up or all down, there's no in between. So picture mute's a little different. What picture mute does is, if I turn it on, it displays a completely black screen, but if you can tell, maybe it's too far away, but there's a green light on the projector. The projector's still on, it's still using projector life, but you can't see anything. So you don't want to do this when you leave the room, but if you come in a room and everything looks normal except you don't get any projection, Come in here and make sure picture mute isn't on, because then you can just turn it off. And if we look back at the projector, you see a picture again. All right, when you're all done, there's a few things that you should do. You should log out of the computer like we talked about earlier. You should click exit system on the touch panel, and then shut down system. When you do that, the projectors go off, and the screens go back up into the ceiling. You're not quite done though. We've got to make sure this stays secure, so we're going to close up our lectern and make sure it's locked. Then it's all ready for the next instructor. If you need help in the classroom, call 757-594-7079 and make sure they know it's for a classroom that's being used. If you're just reporting an issue and don't need immediate help, you can also do it at help.cnu.edu.